I'm making this little video for Meg and anyone else who wants to watch it. This is to demonstrate this technique, which I'm told is not cheating because artists do lots of things that could be considered cheating. So I'm going to show you what I do. This is my reference photo. It's the exact same size as my canvas. And you can see that there are pencil tracings. That's because I put a carbon sheet behind this paper and on the canvas, and then I traced over it with a pencil, and that copied the tracing onto my canvas. And then I kind of just painted in the pencil lines so that it would solidify them a little bit better. I didn't want them rubbing off. I wanted them painted in. But if you look closely, you can see the pencil lines are still there, even though some paint is over them. You can't really see them at all on the face anymore because I've completely painted over them. In painting the face, I wanted to get the colors just right. When I mix a color, before I put it on my canvas, I would dab it onto my reference photo to see if it was right. And if it was close enough or spot on, I would put it then on the canvas. And sometimes I would think it was close enough, and after painting for a while, I would think, no, that wasn't close enough, and I'd have to go back. In fact, I'm planning to do that on these eyebrows. They're looking a little bit too dark, and it makes her look more inquisitive than I think she actually was. She looks more relaxed in the real one, and then in my canvas, she's looking like, oh my goodness, especially uh, this eyebrow here. I don't think it's as dark. So I'm going to show you how I do this with this hand. There's a lot of pink in that hand. We're going to get to work. Okay, for starters, I have a couple of paints out. I've got white. Okie dokie. So I know I'm going to need a bit of white. You can see that. A bit of white. We're going to do a bit of burnt sienna. It's kind of a base color. Scoop, scoop, smush, smush. Now with a little dab on there, I'm going to check to see the darkness. Whoa, okay, when I dab it on, look how light that is. We're going to have to go way darker. This I'm just going to grab a dab of raw burnt sienna. See how that measures up here. Okay, that looks too dark. What about in here, though? I don't think it's too dark for that fingernail. Now, I've drawn over this a lot. You can see the pencil marks, and you can see that I color matched on the tip of her thumb and covered a whole bunch. But I printed out another one here with totally different colors, so I can't use it for color matching. I can use it for reference. So this shows the thumb and that shadow just like eating up the entire section of her top th of the thumb, not just her fingernail. What shape is that? It's like a square pyramid going off, diamond shape going off the page. Over here, it looks darker, but that could just be my drawing on it. Looks a little bit lighter there, darker there, but I think we're just going to have to go with the reference. It's not drawn all over. Going back up here, that makes me think it's a little dark. We're going to need to go a smidgen lighter. doesn't take a lot of white to make a dark lighter, just like it doesn't take a lot of dark to make a white darker. Just a little dab here. See how it matches. I think we're still too dark. Yes, I do. Grabbing a dab of that. Beep, beep, beep. And I'm going to do it right on top of my other dab because that'll give us more space to work with. That looks pretty much exact, for especially for that shadow there. According to our reference, that shadow there is the same. It only goes a smidgen darker. So, I'm going to load up my brush. Y'all ready for this? When we're looking at that paper, this whole thing is part of the thumb shadow. And it does get a little darker there, so I'm kind of like, cool. That's a little already there. 
And looking at my reference photo, there is like a teensy weensy bit of curve to the top of the thumb. Hardly any. There's got to be some room for the other part of the top of her thumb, sort of creating a circle-y shape. I guess there's room for the circle-y shape, and when I do the lighter color, I can have it wheeze in on top how I want it to. Oh, I'm very happy with the top of that thumb now. The next thing we're going to do is this tri- oops, I can't see. At this triangle right there. See how like we take everything and we just turn it into a shape? This is not nearly as red. It looks almost green in color. Okay, we gotta go make a green now. So let's start with the burnt sienna that we made here. This, this one that was too dark. Oops, I pointed the wrong one. This one that was too dark. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Oh, that's too much blue. This blue, it goes such a long way. Like, you don't even know. Okay, I guess it doesn't go that long of a way. But there have been a lot of times where I've, like, grabbed blue and then been like, I ruined it. Maybe burnt sienna is strong, too. I've always had it so diluted down with white. Maybe blue overpowers white, but doesn't overpower burnt sienna. See, these are just things that you learn by doing painting and learning to paint. It's all about patience. I'm not the one who said that. So many other people have said that. You notice how it got darker when I added the blue? Now that is super dark. And even though it's darker than the picture, relative to the thumb, I might want it darker. It might look more realistic. And I think I might go ahead and trust the reference photo. I was trusting the darkness before I had written all over it. And I was going with something super dark shadowed as well. And it looks like it goes light pretty fast. Almost like there's the line here and it almost creates a really thin triangle there bottom of the triangle here starts turning green even. I might very carefully even kind of stop it right there. You want to be true to the values. The darkness and the lightness are the values. I just wiped my brush again. For green, I'm going to add a good chunk of blue. Let's do it over here and a good chunk of yellow ochre. Can, I see, can you see that? Okay, it's at the bottom, but you can see it. And I'm sort of, I'm building up the green I want before I'm mixing it with the burnt umber. I figured that little trick out through trial and error. And the green I see in the shadow really has a lot of yellow. We're gonna err on the yellow side of green here. Color matching. Lots of color matching. Needs more yellow. Lots more yellow. Playing with color. That's it. That's the uh, green I wanted. Alright, here's some of the dark. Here's some of the green. See what I get. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, be sure. What are we gonna do? What we always do? We're gonna see how it fits in with our color scheme. Okay, that's really dark still. You wanna lighten it up. But lightening is the easy part. Okay, that is a lot lighter now. Probably gonna be too light. I'm just curious. I think 
the cat that got killed. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so light. Well, not as bad as I thought, but that tone looks really good. It's because I'm getting better at this. Let's do part that, part this. See what we get. I think that's gonna be too light still. I just committed. That was a big commitment there, using it all up like that. Oh, perfect. Thinking about where we're setting this stuff down. It's not all the way throughout. It's mostly in the middle, but we'll probably be pulling that dark color down a bit. So it's definitely in the middle here where I just tested it. Went into there. Now, laying out the outline here, it went down, sort of like keeping this circle of the thumb alive, but beginning to create a triangle. And we're pulling this darkness down into it. Gotta do some blending. Looking at my reference photo that hasn't been scribbled all over. It's like the triangle has like a blob of lighter stuff poking into it from the bottom of where the thumb is. I don't know if my dark goes down on the edges quite enough. Like, I've got the dark coming up from here pretty good. But I don't know if I have it going down here enough. But I think I do. So when I put the lighter blob from the thumb in, I think it'll look just right. Yeah, especially when I look at it from this one, it doesn't look too dark. When I look at this one, it doesn't look dark enough. When I look at this one, it doesn't look too dark. Looking up here, I'm kind of feeling like I'll just trust what I have color matched, even though I'm scared that it doesn't look quite right. It makes me want to finish the thumb, though. The roundness of the thumb. Because that'll tie it all together. Got another dark part to do. And that's the cute little elbow pit. Right. There, we've got a dark spot. Oh, this is another triangle. This part is greenish, this part is reddish. Oh, so cute, the baby arms. We're just gonna put down a little more of this green stuff. Oh wait, I have the light stuff, darn. Do, 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 hi. Look at that cute little elbow pit. Is that the right color? I already put it down, but. I really did need to test it before I did that. I don't know. I don't think that was the right color. We'll have to redo it later. 